This tape was developed by the United States Fencing Association presents the Maestros Alex Biganet and Ed Richards. Fencing footwork techniques. Proper footwork helps a fencer attack, defend, and counterattack against an opponent. The preparation and completion of certain actions, the maintenance and regulation, is accomplished by proper footwork. Fencing footwork is divided into two groups, simple and compound. The simple movements are the forward crossover, backward crossover, half advance, half retreat, advance, retreat, lunge. Foot movements can only be executed by moving the center of gravity, which should be accomplished surreptitiously. The trunk should move simultaneously with the legs. It is a mistake for the trunk to execute a movement before or after the legs. Foot movement from an odd guard position has many advantages. It provides better balance, easier change of direction, elimination of the up and down movement of the body's center of gravity, and simultaneous movements of the trunk and legs. In teaching footwork, any movement can be interrupted and broken down in order to enhance the feeling for the center of gravity. This is the preferred modern method. To understand, feel, and learn the common technical norms of fencing footwork, one should strive for uninterrupted fluid motion displacing the center of gravity, a natural erect body position, parallel position of the shoulders to the floor during foot movements, simultaneous movements of the trunk with the legs, light, smooth change of direction, and light, smooth footwork. The cross step is a variation of natural walking from the on guard position. It is necessary to find the relationship between the known and natural movements to unknown and artificial fencing actions. If one learns the cross step early in training, one can avoid frequent errors which accompany the raising and lowering of the center of gravity, such as poor trunk posture. Observe the demonstrator as he shows the simple footwork movements. Remember to move the center of gravity properly in a level straight line forward or backward, not up and down. The forward crossover. The backward crossover. Prior to learning the advance and retreat, it is important to first learn the half advance and half retreat. The half advance. The half advance is made from the on guard position. The center of gravity moves simultaneously forward with the front leg. The back leg pushes forward to help move the center of gravity. The half retreat. Learning to push the center of gravity is important to the proper execution of the retreat. The half retreat is performed from the on guard position. In the half retreat, the rear leg moves backward simultaneously with the backward displacement of the center of gravity. The front leg pushing backwards helps move the center of gravity. Initiation of most footwork is characterized by a slight lifting of the toe. The advance. The advance is performed from the on guard position. Without fully extending the leg, the front foot moves forward one step. The movement is initiated with a slight raising of the toes. The heel should just clear the floor, neither touching the floor nor raising it too high. The front heel should land as the back leg pushes the center of gravity forward. The back foot should follow, covering the same distance as the lead foot. The trunk must move in a smooth, fluid motion and remain erect. At first, the advance should be short. 
Long advances may cause gross changes in the position of the trunk and in one's center of gravity. After achieving correct and fluid motion, the student should start to accelerate the movement of the back foot. It can only be done if the front foot starts softly and slowly. The Retreat The retreat is also executed from the on guard position. Without extending fully, the back leg moves backward one step. The front leg follows and covers the same distance as the trailing foot. The front leg pushes slowly to promote a fluid backward motion of the center of gravity. When performed correctly, the retreat preserves contact and distance with the opponent. Footwork has two important requirements. Regardless of the length of movement, neither of the legs should extend fully and the trailing foot should follow the lead foot without interruption. Footwork must always be relaxed, natural, elastic, and supple. One should avoid having the center of gravity move in a parabolic fashion. The lunge. The lunge is one of the most important and complex fencing movements. The front toes should rise and the foot should glide just barely above the floor. Simultaneously, the back leg should be rapidly extended. In this way, the center of gravity is transported forward. The front heel should land first. The correct final position is as follows. Trunk upright. Front thigh parallel to the floor. Front knee perpendicular to the instep of the front foot. Back leg extended but relaxed. And the back foot flat on the floor. When the lunge is performed with a weapon by a beginning fencer, the weapon arm is extended first, the shoulder relaxed, weapon in line with the arm, and the point directed at the target. With more advanced pupils, the weapon arm is extending during the lunge, making sure the extension starts before or with the lunge. Near the completion of the back leg extension, the back arm should drop relaxed toward the back thigh, palm up. The front leg should arrive in its position after the point strikes the target. When practicing the lunge, remember that the point hits the target before the front foot hits the floor. When in the lunge, the center of gravity is not exactly in the body's geometrical center. However, the fencer should feel that his weight is distributed equally on both feet. The depth of the center of gravity naturally depends on the length of the lunge, since it is always lower in the lunge than it is in the guard position. The center of gravity should not be lower than the line which connects the front knee with the back ankle. The back arm should be relaxed and parallel with the back leg. The returning to the on guard. In returning to the on guard position from the lunge, the front leg pushes the fencer's body backward from the heel. By flexing the back leg sharply, the center of gravity is transported backward to the original on guard position. The front foot then returns to the original on guard stance. Some coaches prefer their fencers to bend the weapon arm after returning to the on guard position to cover the target area. Other coaches prefer their fencers to bend their weapon arm first and then recover in order to emphasize relaxation of the shoulder. In either of these schools of thought, the center of gravity should move parallel to the floor without wavering. Fencing footwork is divided into two groups, simple and compound. The simple movements are the forward crossover, backward crossover, half advance, half retreat, advance, retreat, lunge,